De leur volonté de tourner la page après sept ans de pouvoir méprisant et corrosif. Europe is changing fast and populism is rising. In this video, we're looking at the populist rampage sweeping Europe. Brexit was probably the first blow that ushered in a new era. In France, Rassemblement National inches closer to power as time goes by. It seems that at each passing election, every party's goal is about preventing Marine Le Pen from taking over. That comes with a cost. As we saw over the difficulty to form a new government following the 2024 snap elections for the National Assembly. In Sweden, the Swedish Democrats finished second in the 2022 general elections. While they don't run any ministry, they are the party that makes the current three-party coalition possible. Mass migration turned the country on its head and the government knows they have to deliver. The result? The army was sent to help fight gang crime. Record fees are offered to migrants to leave Sweden and, for the first time in 50 years, Sweden recorded net emigration. In Italy, Giorgia Maloney has managed to rule with surprising stability. Her party won big in the 2024 European elections, and while she was snubbed for a deal by the EU's Commission President, Maloney remains strong. With new political families being formed and reshuffled in the EU Parliament, the Italian Prime Minister may find herself with increasing influence. In Hungary, Viktor Orban maintains his tough stance on immigration, unrelenting in his refusal to adhere to some of the EU's directives and seemingly unaffected by Brussels' threats to cut funds. At the time of this video, the controversial Hungarian Prime Minister is in his fifth term and fourth straight. In Slovakia, the first taste of populist forces on the left came when Robert Fico became Prime Minister in 2023. He and his party, Smer, have been in power before, but post-2020, changed to more nationalist and populist stances. Fico, who has been shot twice in June in an attempted assassination, is also refusing to implement the EU's new migration rules. In the UK, Nigel Farage's reform gained parliamentary representation for the first time with 14.3% of the votes, but due to Britain's electoral system, that only amounted to five seats. As the credibility of Labour and Conservative parties plummets, expect reform to make huge gains in future elections. It remains to be seen if they can form an understanding with the struggling Conservatives fighting for political relevance. The Southport riots are an example and cautionary tale of the tensions brewing within British society. In the Netherlands, Geert Wilders' PVV won the Dutch general elections. The PVV is a part of the government with five ministries, and now the Netherlands wants out of the EU's asylum policy. While that's highly unlikely to happen, as it would need unanimous support, it's another threat to the EU's idea of a common policy on migration. More recently in Austria, the Freedom Party, FBO, finished first in the federal elections in another headline win. While forming a government will be very difficult, it's another stark message from the voters. If you like what you're seeing, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. A few clicks can make all the difference to us and help the channel grow. Thank you. And then there is Germany, where the AFD continues its steady rise particularly in former East Germany states. Olaf Scholz's coalition is so unpopular that the German government re-established border controls on the ground, which could trigger the end of the Schengen area. The dire consequences of disastrous climate and immigration policies have become a reality. And now there's Sarah Wagenknecht with her newly created alliance, BSW, already a populist left-wing force to be reckoned with as we saw by the 2024 state election results. The populist and migrant skeptic left and right are squeezing the moderates. There are only two choices. Either the moderates move towards each other and form the giant center, which is what Ursula von der Leyen did in Brussels, or establish an understanding with the populists. Other countries are experiencing similar trends. Vox in Spain, Chega in Portugal, and the ANO in the Czech Republic. If you're interested in this topic, we've done a video about the reasons behind the rise of populism. A lot more is at stake beyond immigration. The future of the Schengen area, 
NATO and its relationship with Russia or Europe's economic relationship with China. So, are Europeans infected with a racist, xenophobic mind virus? Or is the establishment to blame for such developments? As these events unfold, other questions arise. Will the establishment understand current dynamics and change its policies? What would the EU look like with a populist France or Germany? And what do you think? Leave us your thoughts below. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.